Virus. Alam naman natin na makapangyarihan ang ating Panginoon at kaya niya gawin ang lahat. Second, let us pray for our government leaders na bigyan sila ng gabay ng ating Panginoon. 
turn, let us also pray for our church leaders na pinapatuloy ang pagbigay ng midweek services and Sunday services sa atin. Fourth, let us pray for the frontliners. Uh, nabigyan sila ng resistensya laban sa sakit at para ipatuloy ang kanilang tukulin. Fifth, let us pray for the gospel to spread na ngayon sa oras ng pandemya. Kailangan ng tao ng katiyakan na laging gumagabay ang ating Panginoon.
shipping po tonight. I just want to share a verse from Psalm. It says from Psalm 28 verse 7 that The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in Him and He knows me. My heart leaps for joy and my song I sing praise. The good news in this verse is that when we put our faith in God, we will always find ways to return the trust in Rest assured that He will guide us and protect us, especially in the nakaharap na. So, let us continue to keep faith in Him. In this verse, as we sing.
Welcome to our online midweek service. Hopefully, you have been encouraged, edified, and strengthened in faith through the Word of God being shared here for the past weeks and months that you have been tuning with us. So, we are on the third month of our quarantine situation. Kumusta ka na ngayon? Ikaw ba ay isa dun sa mga tao gustong gusto nang lumabas pero hindi ka makalabas dahil may batas na bawal lumabas. Or, isa ka naman doon sa mga taong pwede ka namang lumabas pero ayaw mo pa rin lumabas dahil nangangamba ka na kapag lumabas ka, may makakontra ka na virus at madadala mo ito sa iyong tahanan. So many people nowadays are being paralyzed with mental issues relative to pandemic. According to SWS survey, those Filipinos who have responded to it, 87% of them are worried na mahahawahan ng COVID-19 ang kanilang pamilya. Even parents are worried also because uh, gusto nila na wag munang matuloy yung school year 2020-2021 dahil iniisip nila na kapag nag-face-to-face -face learning na ang bata, ay mahahawahan din ang mga ito. They are fearing of the so-called second wave. On the other hand, some psychological experts predict through reliable data and factual basis that after this COVID-19 pandemic ends, there is another pandemic coming and that is the pandemic of mental health. So, ito pong pandemic na ito na maraming pagbabagong idinulot sa ating kapaligiran at sa ating buhay ay lumikha rin ng matinding fears, anxieties, depression, confusion, and feelings of sadness and uncertainties. Ang tanong ng marami, anong buhay ang inaasahan ko ngayong new normal? Anong magiging epekto at kahulugan nito sa akin, sa aking pamilya, at maging sa ekonomiya ng aking bansa? So maraming taong natatakot na sa hinaharap kung ano mangyayari dito kahit hindi pa ito dumarating. Siguro dahil nagkakaroon sila ng realization na ang mga bagay na inaasahan nila sa mundo nito ay walang katiyakan. So tonight, I want to encourage you about the promises of God in Psalms 46. This whole chapter shows us that even though this world is shakeable, we have a God that cannot be shaken. 
and He cares for us. So in this chapter, we are reminded to trust God completely when life gets tough. Why? Because of the three facts revealed in this passage about God's sufficiency in times of crisis. But before that, please join with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you today with an open heart to your word and submission to your sovereignty. Although many things are happening around us and many people are confused and at a loss about what lies ahead in the future, we, your children, rest in the greatness of your power and the truthfulness of your promises. Thank you for opening our spiritual eyes that we may see clearly that you, O oh God, never stop working in every situation of our lives. Reach out to every people in their home watching and minister to their needs. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So our topic today focuses on God's sufficiency in times of crisis. Bakit ko pagkakatiwalaan ang sufficiency ng Diyos sa mga panahon na ako ay nasa krisis? Because of these three facts about God which was revealed in Psalms 46. Number one fact is God's presence is always with us. Ang ibig sabihin, ang presensya ng Diyos ay lagi nating kasama. In Psalms 46, 1 to, 3, 1 to 3, I am reading from New King James Version, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though its waters roar and trouble through the mountains, though the mountains shake with its swelling. So, if you take a look into these verses, you can say that the psalmist is talking about worst natural catastrophe. Yun pong sinabi niya na changing of earth and the mountains being carried into the midst of the sea, pwedeng ito'y tumutukoy sa lindol. At yung tinukoy naman niya that the waters roaring and becoming troubled, pwedeng ito'y tumukoy sa tsunami or water surge or great floodings. The mountain shaken with swelling, ito ay pwedeng tumukoy sa volcanic eruption. So these are all life-threatening dangers. Pero ang sabi niya, therefore I will not fear even though I will experience all of these things. Bakit hindi siya matatakot? Mayroon ba siyang superpowers? Or baka may mala? Gusto lang niyang magyabang. We all know that fear is a natural reaction when our life is being endangered. Mawawala lang ang takot mo kung alam mo ang kasama mo ay makapangyarihan at kaya niyang kontrolin ang mga bagay na kinatatakutan mo. But in this passage, I am pretty sure that the psalmist ay hindi nagyayabang. Nasabi niya ito dahil ito'y resulta ng una niyang binanggit. Ano yung una niyang binanggit? God is my refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Note the word very present or in other translation, ever present. It means God is not far away. He is beside us and His help is always available for us. So, meaning to say, God's presence brings security and strength to His people. He is able to say, therefore I am not, uh, therefore I will not fear, dahil alam niya kung sino ang kanyang kasama. Alam niya kung anong kayang gawin nito para sa kanya. He is very confident that this powerful God that he trusts will never leave him nor forsake him during this difficult time of his life. So, kung kilala mo ang yung Diyos at alam mo ang likas niyang katangian at alam mo kung anong kaya niyang gawin at alam mo palagi mo siyang kasama, then, even these fearsome events will not take away peace from you. 
So the word refuge means a place of safety. Kapag nandun ka sa mga ganung sitwasyon na you feel like you are being endangered by what is happening around you, meron kang isang matatakbuhan which can be your hiding place, your place of safety. And that is what God is to us. At habang binibigyan ka niya ng security during the situation, binibigyan ka rin niya ng lakas para makayanan mong harapin ang anumang suliranin na dumarating sa iyong buhay ganun man, gaano man ito kabigat. So, whatever problems you are going through and you are overwhelmed with your present situation, remember that you are not alone in this. God is with you and His presence gives you security and strength. So, knowing that the presence of God is in you, it gives you sufficiency even the world is full of uncertainties. Number two, God's provision is always available for us. Ang provision ng Diyos ay laging nakalaan para sa atin. In verses 4 to 7, There is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her at the break of dawn. The nations rage, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge. So take note of the phrase, There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. Ano yung river that makes glad the city of God? And what is the significance of this river? with regards to God's provision for us. Let me give you a historical background. Why is this psalm was written? So Jerusalem is a city not built on water or not built on river. Ibig sabihin, walang ilog sa loob ng Jerusalem. Walang, uh, mal walang malapit na ilog kung kaya ang mga tao ay kinakailangan lumabas dun sa protective walls ng syudad upang makakuha ng tubig dun sa nearest source of water outside which is the stream of Gihon. Alam natin kung gaano ka importante ang water when it comes to survival. So, noong mga panahong ito na paghahari ni King Hezekiah, ang hari ng Assyria na si, na si King Sennacherib ay nagbanta na wawasakin niya ang Jerusalem. Kaya kinugkob niya ito. When you say kinugkob, you surround the place with armies so that yung mga nasa loob ay hindi makakalabas at wala ding uh, outside sources of supply ang pwedeng makapasok doon sa loob. Ginagawa yon para mapadali ang pagpapasuko doon sa kinugkob. So, si King uh, Sennacherib ng Assyria, tiwalang-tiwala siya na yung lack of water source ng Jerusalem ang magpupwersa dito para sila ay mapilitang sumuko. Pero ang hindi alam ni King Sennacherib ay inihanda na ng Diyos ang Jerusalem bago pa man ito mangyari. Through the wisdom God gave to King Hezekiah, Nakagawa si King Hezekiah ng underground tunnel connecting the stream of Gihon and the pool of Siloam which is inside the city of Jerusalem. So habang sila ay under siege, kung nakikita ninyo yung larawan, yan yung structure ng tunnel na underground river. Yan ang kanyang itsura. So Habang sila ay kinukubkob ng Assyria, etong underground river na ito ang siyang nagsupply sa pangangailangan ng Jerusalem. So, ano yung implication nito sa ating buhay? This river portrays all the blessings and provisions of God for us even during difficult times. During this time of quarantine, ang dami pong mga empleyado ang tanggalan ng trabaho, ang daming uh, hindi kumikita ng sapat at 
even our economy, we are not assured kung hanggang saan kakayanin na isustain ang ating bansa. Marami din kumpanya ang nanganganib na magsara dahil sila ay nalulugi. Pero gayon pa man, ano man ang ating maging sitwasyon, God will supply all our needs according to His riches in glory. The Word of God says, God is my refuge, I will not lack anything. So, hindi tayo dapat magamba dahil ang source natin, ang source ng ating pangangailangan ay hindi sa mundong ito lamang nakasalalay. Kung hindi sa Diyos na may likha at may kontrol ng mundong ating ginagalawan. So, God in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God will help her in the break of dawn. Our resources might be affected by our present economic situation, but since God is with us, we will not fall. Hindi tayo babagsak. If we put our trust totally on God, He will see us through in every situation of our lives. He will find a way where there seems to be no way. God can provide for His people even this world cannot do it to us anymore. Number three, God's power is always working for us. Ang kapangyarihan ng Diyos ay laging kumikilos para sa atin. Verses 8 to 9, Come, behold the work of the Lord who has made desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease at the, to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. So when you feel like saying, Lord, hindi ko na po kaya. Gusto ko na pong sumuko. What does the, the word of God says? What does God says into these uh, verses? Ang sabi, come. Kanino ka lalapit? lalapit ka sa Panginoon. And then, behold what the Lord has done. Tingnan mo kung ano yung ginawa ng Panginoon. Recall, remember the power of God working in your life. Remember the power of God being uh, revealed into this world and into your life. Yung verse 9, tumutukoy ito sa kapangyarihan ng Diyos na kumilos para sa Jerusalem sa panahong hindi nila alam o nakikita. Siguro sa mga panahong ito, as it was said in this verse, He makes war cease to the ends of the earth, He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two, and He burns the chariots in the fire. Maaring, misang kasi sinasabi natin, Lord, parang hindi ka naman kumikito sa buhay ko. Parang wala namang nababago. Pinabayaan mo na yata ako. It doesn't mean na hindi porke hindi natin nakikita sa sitwasyon natin na kumikilos ang Diyos. That doesn't mean na hindi nga siya kumikilos. At dito sa verses na ito ay pinakita na ang Diyos ay kumilos noong mga panahon na ang Jerusalem ay unaware. Hindi nila yon nakikita. Dahil it was in the night ng kumilos ang Panginoon. Perhaps the situation here is nung uh, sabihin ni King Sennacherib na okay, we are ready to destroy Jerusalem. Aim your fire towards Jerusalem. So, nung mga panahon na ang mga taga Jerusalem ay mapayapang natutulog, doon sasalakay ang kanilang mga kalaban. Pero, kumilos ang Diyos. God breaks the bow. God cuts the spear and He burns the chariots in fire. So, yung mga paparating na sibat, paparating na palaso, lahat yun pinutol ng Diyos at sinunog niya ang mga mandirigma na in chariots of fire. Silang lahat na lumulusob sa Jerusalem ay winasak ng Panginoon. So, as you can see here, even though King Sennacherib ay isang malakas at marahas na hari na kinatatakutan ng maraming bansa dahil lahat ng kanyang kinukubkob ay kanyang napapagtagumpayan, subalit, nang subukan niyang galawin ang Jerusalem, 
ay winasak ng Diyos ang kanyang mga armies. Dahil ang kanyang ginalaw ay ang city of God, ang bansang nagtitiwala sa Diyos. So, because of that, pagdating ng bukang liwayway, ay nakita na ng mga taga-Herusalem na ang kanilang mga kalaban ay wala na. Ang kanilang mga kalaban ay patay ng lahat. So, who did the working? It is God. The people of God won the battle without even fighting. So, susuko ka pa ba kung tinapos na ng Diyos ang laban para sa'yo? You may not see it, but God is working. Our God is powerful and His power is working for us. We might not see it yet, but God doesn't stop working. And when God works, it is always for the good of His people. In Romans 8, 28, And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. So good or bad situation, God works for our own good. Now, since we have uh, learned that God sustains us, that God is sufficient for us even in crisis because of His presence with us, His provision for us, and His power working for us, how will you then respond to this crisis? Paano ka tutugon? In verse 10 and 11, He says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. So, ano pong ibig sabihin ng be still? Ang ibig po sabihin nito, stop struggling with your own strength. Stop fighting with your own strength. Because this is the fight of the Lord. Hindi mo yan kakayanin kung sarili mong lakas ang gagamitin mo. Pero kung ito ibibigay mo sa Diyos, you will be still, you will be in peace because it will be God who will work for you. It will be God who will fight for you. So if God sustain us with these three peace, which is His presence, provision, and power, then we should also respond to trouble by being still, which can be done in three peace as well. Ano yun? Number one is prayer. When you are in this difficult situation, all you have to do is pray. Go to the presence of God on bended knees. Pero ang prayer mo dapat, hindi siya narration ng lahat ng problema mo at lahat ng kailangan mo. Because God knows everything. God knows your problem. God knows your needs. So, the more you say your problems kasi and your needs, you tend to be more stressed. You tend to be more uh, depressed. So, ang nangyayari, nagpray ka, pero mas lalo kang nalungkot. Mas lalo kang na-stress. Kasi yung prayer mo, naglita niya ka lang nung problema mo. Na, na magnify mo lang yung problem mo. So, your prayer should be a declaration of God's promises. When you pray declaring God's promises, that is a powerful prayer. Why? Because God honors His word. God is bound to His promises. And when you declare it in your prayer, God moves. And that makes it more powerful. That makes your prayer powerful. Number two, praise. Thank God for what He has done and is continually doing in your life. Thank God. Even your situation is not good. Even if you have all the reason to be stressed. Even if you have all the reason to worry. Even if you have the reason to complain. Still, thank the Lord. When you thank the Lord, you magnify Him. And when you magnify the Lord, your problem becomes smaller and smaller. Bakit? Dahil ang Diyos na ang nakaharap sa iyong problema, hindi na ikaw. Next is peace receive the peace that comes from the Lord the word of God says my peace I give unto you it's the peace that the world 
cannot give. Accept that peace from the Lord. Stop struggling. Stop fighting on your strength. Give everything unto the Lord and the peace of God will be on you. So all of these three things are wrapped up in one verse. Philippians 4, 6-7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. Here in this verse, nabanggit po yung tatlong P. Pray, praise or thanks, and peace. Finally, let me quote one of Billy Graham's statement. Billy Graham says, I have read the last page of the Bible and it's all going to turn out alright. Kahit pangit ang sitwasyon mo ngayon, in the end, it's going to be alright. When man's work stop, God's work begin. So, trust everything unto the Lord. So, kung ngayong alam mo na sa iyong puso na ang Diyos ay sapat kahit sa gitna ng krisis, dahil ang kanyang presensya, ang provision at kapangyarihan niya ay laging nakalaan para sa iyo, then, be at peace in God and let the peace coming from God flow like streams of living water and hope to whomever it touches. Let your life that was blessed by God be a channel of blessing to others. Let Christ shine brightly in you so that through you, God's message of hope and love be made known to many people in this time of crisis. Let me pray for you if you are this Christian. Lord, in these times, difficult situation I declare that your children will stand faith and hold on to your promises and as we keep that faith shine on us Lord let the world see how you protect and provide for your children for you who promise is faithful and what you promise you will make it happen thank you Lord for the peace that we have in you and that we can share with others. Be glorified in us and through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Kung ikaw naman ay hindi palubos na nakakakilala sa Diyos at sa mga panahong ito, ikaw ay nakakaramdam ng kawalan ng kapiyakan para sa iyong kinabukasan at hindi mo alam kung paano ka magsisimula dahil sa mga pagbabago sa iyong buhay. You need someone to hold on to. You need someone who alone can save you into this present situation. The Lord is telling you, Come to me, all of you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. If you want to experience God's rest from all your struggles, and you want to experience the peace that comes from God's love and grace, let me pray for you. Lord, I pray for those watching in this time in their own homes who needed hope and don't know where to go during these difficult times of their lives. Let them recognize that many years ago, you have given your life to them to rescue them from their greatest need of salvation. And that salvation is available to anyone who believes and accepts you as Lord and Savior. Lord, Reach out to these people and come into their lives as they open their heart for you and respond to your invitation. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hi everyone, this is Gian and as per our synchronized house prayer, ay magkakaroon din po tayo ng change. Instead na magbigay kami ng mga Bible verses na inyong babasahin at i-discuss with your families every day, we'll be giving out one book from the Bible and the number of chapters to be read every day will also be announced. Ina-encourage namin kayo to read the chapters on your own. 
family sharing and discussion ay magaganap tuwing 7pm. Share ninyo ang inyong mga thoughts at ang mga verses na tumatak sa inyo sa ating Facebook group kasama ng picture ng inyong family. For our announcements, our services will still be happening online until further notice. Our Sunday services at 9 a.m. Our midweek services every Thursday at 7 p.m. And our prayer and fasting every fourth Saturday of the month at 9 a.m. You may watch them premiere live on both our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. Our breaking of the bread happening every first Sunday of the month right after the word delivery. Discipleship group discussions will still push through online. Do coordinate with your DJ leaders to set up an agreed schedule. We also have our synchronized house prayer happening every night at 7 p.m. Scripture or book of the day will be posted on our Facebook group. For more updates, you may follow us on these accounts. For Facebook, facebook.com slash jcpftcpillar or facebook.com slash jcpftcpo. For our Instagram, it's at jcpftc. And for our YouTube channel, it's Pillar Worship. And finally, this coming Sunday, June 14th, we will be celebrating our 23rd anniversary. Invite your friends and families to go online together because it premieres at 9 a.m. And because it is our 23rd anniversary, we have a lot of surprises in store for you, so stay tuned. Special Announcement Do message us or any member of the IT team to register for free data to be able to celebrate with us on our anniversary. Now let us declare our mission and vision. Our mission is to glorify God by reaching out and mentoring families, producing spirit-filled leaders and Christ-centered communities. Glorify God, disciple families. And our vision is, by God's grace, to become an influential disciple-making church of Christ-centered families in the Philippines and beyond. Now let us speak blessings to one another. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face towards you and give you peace. God bless everyone.